welcome to my sewing room. I cannot tell you how much I love, love, love the technique I'm going to share with you today. It's called shaped beading with ribbon run through it. And oh, we have silk ribbon embroidery on top. Of, oh, well, you just wait. Let me show you. I think a picture's worth a thousand words. The first garment I'm going to share with you is this lovely uh, nightgown with the beading. Now, beading is called ribbon slot in Europe. What it means is it has little holes in the lace and ribbon runs through it. Now, this is a wonderful nightgown, which has the, the ribbon, the silk ribbon that's been run through the holes in the beading, have been stitched down with tiny little French knots. Look at the beautiful silk ribbon embroidery and the little roses and the French knots and the tiny little rose buds and all of the ribbon embroidery that's been run on top of that beading. I think that is so magnificent. Now, the next dress I'm going to share with you, the, by the way, the pattern and design for this was in So Beautiful magazine, is a Christmas dress. This has beading with sort of a tannish, goldish uh, silk ribbon run through it, and the bells, the Christmas bells down here are out of a brocade. And then look at all the wonderful silk ribbon embroidery that embellishes on top of, beside of, I just absolutely love this. And by the way, there are just some little uh, gold beads, little Austrian beads in there too. Now, I have a little secret on the back of this dress. I just could not resist sharing with you. Look at the buttons. Aren't they wonderful? They are covered buttons, and each little button has a silk ribbon flower and a tiny touch of gold embroidery floss, the purple one and the gold one. And then here's oh, a, a, almost a deep orange one, and then a robin's egg blue. Aren't those magnificent buttons? Let's don't forget the babies, how much fun it is for mothers and grandmothers to sew for brand new babies that have just arrived or that are about to arrive. Isn't this bow just out of this world? The bow is tied and has the ribbons run through it and then beautiful silk ribbon embroidery and shades of robin's egg blue peach, yellows, variegated floss, lavender, and then coming down the little dress, the little bow is made or the tails of the bow come down for a scalloped bottom, and then the ribbon has been run through the beading. Now I'm going to share with you all the tricks on how to do this. This is a little child's purse, and as you know, the Victorians call this a reticule. So when you hear about a reticule, that means a purse. This one has the little bow on it. Wouldn't that be fun for a little girl to carry with her Easter dress with all the beautiful silk ribbon? And then last but certainly not least, we have a little baby bonnet. You know, I guess I ought to take the pin out of here so I can really show you the little bonnet. Let me hold it for you. See the top of the little bonnet that goes with the day gown with the beautiful lace-shaped bow and the pretty, pretty colors of silk ribbon embroidery. Now, if you will come along with me over to my technique boards, I'm going to share with you how easy, easy, easy it is to make the most, most beautiful things you've ever seen with the bow shaping. To do this technique, which is so beautiful, you're going to need at least three things, plus a lot of creativity, I might add. The first thing you're going to need is a lace, a French lace, which we call beading. You see, it looks like just a lace netting background with holes in it. And as I mentioned earlier, in Europe, they do call this ribbon slot. Now then, look over here. You're going to need a bodkin needle or else a ribbon thread, or some people call it. It makes running the ribbon through a lot easier. And last but certainly not least, you're going to need some silk ribbon. I have a couple of shapes up here to share with you, and I'm going to give you the three steps rather than actually shaping them, showing you what they look like. The top one is ovals. That's the starting stages there before I pull the string and make it lay down. Here's the next stage where I have pulled the threads that are built into the, the French laces, made it lay down, and this is what it looks like after it has been zigzagged down. You see how pretty that is with the ribbon run through it? Now, Joanna used to call this shape football, so I'll call this my first football activity. Now let's make some hearts. I've begun the process up here for you by putting the pins around the large side of the heart and I will finish shaping that. Now on this illustration, I've already finished shaping the whole thing 
and I've pulled the threads that are built into the laces. I've pulled the threads and made it lay down flat. And on this one, I have zigzagged it down, looking ever so pretty with the lace shaping, the beading shaping rather, the pink stitching and the pink ribbon. If you'll come along with me over to the sewing machine, I will share with you one more time exactly how easy it is to do one of my favorite techniques. All right, the first thing I do is trace the pattern off onto my fabric. The next thing I do, as you can see here with my little football lace beading or oval lace beading, is to shape it and then to pull the threads here as I have done, and it lays down so nice and flat. The next thing that I have done is zigzagged it down. Isn't that pretty the way the ribbon just goes flat as it can be and the lace is just shaped around and how pretty it is. That is called oval, oval shaping or football shaping as Joanna used to call it. Now this one is really one of my very favorites here. I've shaped the heart. Now when you shape a lace heart, you put the pins around the edge, around the outside, and then French and English laces, and they're mostly just French now because most of the factories in England have closed. You find a pull thread, which I just put the pin under there to find it, and then you pull it and look what happens. Some people say, well, Martha, that is just magic. And it really is magic. I've shaped the lace. Now remember, you've got to run the ribbon through before you do the lace shaping. Then after I get the the, the uh, lace pull down, I will go in then and tighten the ribbon. And then when I spray starch it and press it, it will be so flat and pretty. That is a lace shaped heart. Here is what the heart looks like after it's finished, how pretty it is. It's been shaped and the ribbon has been pulled into place. And you remember on that beautiful Beverly Sheldrick blouse, she took a little French knot and put a little hand French knot at each one of these points, which means that the ribbon just will not pull up at all. And really it added such a nice touch before she did her the rest of her silk ribbon embroidery. Now I have shaped a heart here and I'm gonna use my little shish kebab stick and all I, all in the world I'm going to do to attach this is simply to zigzag around it and on this is a really good place too if I had wanted to instead of putting pins after I got the shaping done it would have been a really nice time for me to have just taken some of the glue you know the fabric the basting glue and I could have glued it down and then I would not have had to pull these pins out just simply glued it down let it dry and then a little bit later on all you do is wash out the glue. Now I'm gonna go around the lace shaping, around the lace shaping. Maybe some of you have noticed that I am not using stabilizer, although I am using a very, very thin lace, of course, since all French lace is thin lace. And I'm using a Swiss Batiste, I'm using Nalona. Well, just doing a zigzag, it really isn't usually necessary to put stabilizer. Pull the next pin out. I'm going to go, now I'm going to also show you a fun trick. When I get to the place where the lace cross is over, now the top piece of lace cross is over, to get a Celtic lace shaping look, I'm going to pick up my needle, slip it over, if I can get my needle up and not get it caught, there we go, slip it over, lower it on the other side of the lace, and begin to sew again, and then I will have a really pretty look. Go ahead and clip that or pull it back. I'll have a really, really pretty look, which will make this look like Celtic lace shaping. All right, I'm gonna sew slowly, and just simply go all the way around this heart. Now remember, if I had basted it, rather than pinned it, I could have gone a little bit faster, because I would not have had to stop. And I don't mean basting it with real basting, and I mean basting it with that wonderful glue that you baste it with. It really isn't glue at all. All right, do you get the idea there? We're gonna just zigzag this wonderful little uh, beading which I've shaped, which has ribbon in it, and that is one of my all-time favorite techniques. Now then, I have a really beautiful home decorating project for you, and it has shaped beading also. decorating project for you is so pretty. It's a table runner done on ecru linen and it has ecru beading with beautiful ecru silk ribbon run through it. As you can see it's shaped in ovals on the side and the ovals go over and under and over and under and down on both ends we have more ovals and every so often there's a little French knot also done in the ecru silk ribbon to hold it down. 
Now I thought you might like to see um, how you use one of those bodkins and more importantly how you thread it. It's kind of crazy the way it works but it's very easy. There are two holes in this bodkin. I'm going to take my green ribbon run it up through the first hole then I run it through, by the way, I did cut it at an angle, the ribbon that is. I run it through the second hole, and then I kind of pull up on it a little bit. And then it's very secure, and I'm now ready to thread my ribbon. Now, I told you earlier, oh, by the way, before I go into the next step, you trace off your design. This time, I've traced it off on linen. Now then, before I go any further, I will tell you that you can either shape your laces with the ribbon already threaded through it, that's a good way of doing it, or you can wait, I think this is a little bit harder, but I wanted to show you that you can do it, you can wait and use your bodkin and thread your ribbon through, uh, you know, after your laces have been shaped. By the way, I have used my wonderful basting glue just to kind of glue this whole thing down so I don't have to have any uh, pins in there when I get ready to sew and it washes right out and it's just really a wonderful little trick. Now, so you see, you take your bodkin, you run your ribbon through, and now then I'm ready to sew around it with a zigzag. The first time I sew around it, it's just going to be a little narrow zigzag. And of course, this is the top of the table runner. I'll leave it as is, but I do have to trim away the bottom because I want this beautiful oval to be the scallop shape on the bottom. So I have water-soluble stabilizer underneath it. After I zigzag around all sizes, uh, all sides of the beading one time, I will then come in here and very carefully trim away the uh, linen only, leaving the water soluble stabilizer. Now when I go in here to do my final zigzag, um, I, the reason I need that water soluble stabilizer, I can't zigzag, do the zig into the fabric and the zag off out into air. I've got to have that water soluble stabilizer to do my zigzag. So I'll line it up and then I simply zigzag with the zig going into the lace and the zag going right off onto that water soluble stabilizer. And this will give me a beautiful, tight, satin stitched finish. Just gonna go around, of course I can go as fast as I wanna go and it's just real easy to go fast after you get the swing of it and make sure you're in the right location. And remember, I'm zigging and zagging going onto the lace and off over onto the water soluble stabilizer. Can you see what a pretty finish that makes? And believe me, if I did not have my water soluble stabilizer, it probably would not be overly beautiful. Next, I have a beautiful rendition of the New Zealand ladies blouse for you. Our New Zealand blouse pattern is embellished so beautifully for you for this show. The first thing I would like to share is this beautiful lace shaped bow, which is really done with the beading and you see the silk ribbon run through it. And then just absolutely magnificent hand silk ribbon embroidery right here on the bodice. And of course there's entredeau. Now what I really, really, really have to let you see is this sleeve. Is that one of the most beautiful sleeves you've ever looked at in your life with the beautiful beading with the silk ribbon run through it and the hand silk ribbon embroidery on top plus a little regular embroidery too done with embroidery floss. What I really wanna share with you though for the technique here in just a minute is the fact that I have an entredeau and gathered lace string. That's what I've called that for years which has been attached to a finished cuff. Now, if you will, let's review once again making the lace-shaped bow using beading with the ribbon, silk ribbon run through it. Here is my beautiful bow, which I've already shaped and I've pinned or else I can use my basting glue. And here it is after it has been stitched down, zigzagged on both sides. Now, before you get ready to do your silk ribbon embroidery, you might just come in here and kind of trace off some lines. That's what I did. And now I know the shape that I'm going to use for my hand silk ribbon embroidery. Now let's see about that entredeau and lace string. I take some entredeau, I trim one side off, as you can see I've done right here, and then to get the gathered lace, I pull the gathering thread that is built into this French lace, and I just simply slip the gathers in, and what it is, it's just a built-in gathering thread. Now then, I'm go after I've made my entredeau and lace string, which is what this is, I come in and I trim away. I'll go ahead and finish trimming this away. I trim away the rest of the seam allowance, so I really do have just an entredeau and lace string. And then I'm going to take my finished cuff 
I'm going to butt it together in zigzag. As you see, I have done right here. My entredeau and lace string has been butted in zigzag to my cuff. And really, that's very easy to do, which is what I'm going to share with you right now. I'm just going to simply butt up the finished cuff to my entredeau and lace string. And this is a real good time to use my wooden shish kebab stick. I just look real carefully to be sure that my zig is going on the finished cuff and my zag is going into the holes of the entredeau. And I'm going to use my shish kebab stick to hold it. And then when I get a pretty secure with it, I can go ahead and go a little bit faster. Actually, you can go a little bit faster. And by the way, you will not use hot pink thread when you're using a robin's egg blue blouse and, and white entredeau. However, it's perfectly all right when you want to see a little bit better on your television show. And now then, we're going to have that beautiful doll quilt constructed. I am so pleased to have as my guest today my very dear friend Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly is the author of a book entitled Colonial Inspirations. She is also a guest designer and frequent contributor to both So Beautiful and Fancy Work magazines. Beverly, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. You know, if you'll just allow me to say one thing, you have on that beautiful, beautiful blouse. And Beverly, years and years ago, when I saw that very blouse for the first time, I called it the New Zealand blouse. And that also was the very first time I'd ever seen the shaped beading with ribbon run through it. And remember I called that the Beverly bow? You did. You did. <laughs> Thank and it you. has become known. <laughs> has become your trademark too, it hasn't has, it? It has, it has. Thank you so much for wearing the Beverly bow New Zealand blouse. And what do you have for us today? Well, today, Martha, we have been, as you know, in the series, we have been learning how to do the stitches on this beautiful doll's quilt. And today, I want to show the ladies how they go about making this little tiny binding that we have here. Uh, it, it, to get this fine one, it, it's not so easy. So I've developed just a little technique to get a really smooth edge to it. Now, I think we all know how to make a quilt, but just quickly running over it, a few little tips. We always start with the backing that goes on the back, and then we put whatever weight batting that we need, whether uh, for a, a small quilt like this, I like to use just a, a lightweight batting, and then we put the fabric on top. And we also always use, make the, the batting and the lining much bigger than the piece of your top fabric. It just allows for any, anything that happens along the way. Now, when you start your pinning, always start in the middle. So put it in the middle and start putting your pins around in this section. Then with your hands, spread it out like that and pin it and like this and pin it. Of course today a lot of people like to use safety pins and you can actually buy special little safety pins that do the, the job rather than using these long quilting pins as I have. So that's a very good way of doing it. And so last but not least go the pins that go on the outside here and you will be pinning that. Now, just as I said, a few little tips on how to make this lovely little binding that we have. First of all, run a row of stitching like this, outlining the scallops. Now, the next thing that you do is get a little, put a little zigzag stitch here. Now, I guess this is probably about two to two and a half with a stitch length of about one. So you can see it's quite a tight little zigzag that I've got around here. And then, then we're going to trim it away with our scissors right up close to the stitching like that. Then cut a bias binding which will be an inch and a quarter wide, fold it in half like that and put the cut edge against the cut edge here. Do your stitching along like that. When you get to the scallop, the peak of the scallop here, just 
put a little cut in like this and that will allow you to push that around like that and make it easier for you to go round the top of this little scallop. Now the last thing to do is you then turn this over, this folded edge over like this so that you will find it will now sit very neatly on the back here like this and then I find the best stitch to use along here I like to stitch it down with a little ladder stitch and that's very simple just like this in on that stitch length there and then into the edge like that along like this and coming right in there like that. It means that when you then pull it down you get a really nice smooth edge and these little ladder stitches just disappear and you can see here you just don't see the stitching at all. Mm -hmm. It's a lovely stitch and I like to use it a lot. Of course you can whip it if you want to or any other stitch that you like to do but that's the one I find the best. Oh, Beverly, thank you so much for sharing how to construct this beautiful, beautiful doll bed. Well, not the bed, <laughs> the covers and the quilt and the pillows for the bed. And now won't you come along with me to my attic? The little dress I have for you today is one of the few silk pieces in my collection. It is a really basic and very sweet little high yoke dress. And if you will notice, there is beading running across the front and the gathered lace edging turns up, making quite a sweet little treatment. Coming down the pretty little skirt, it has the most wonderful uh, hem and bottom, bottom treatment. The beading is gathered to, excuse me, a stitch straight and the gathered lace edging is attached, ribbon run through it, and then on the bottom, beading and gathered lace is simply stitched on straight. Now there are some little sweet rosebuds stitched by hand. Here is one, a little bullion rosebud with little green lazy daisies and then over here moving up, oh I'd say about six or seven inches is another little rosebud and then going down all around just tiny tiny little bits of embroidery around the dress. For our Sewing from the Heart today, I have a letter from Carol Collins from Greenville, Pennsylvania. She writes, Dear Martha, last year my 10-year-old granddaughter was diagnosed with cancer. She had surgery and started chemotherapy. Consequently, she lost her hair and I started making hats all kinds of hats. When I realized that no 10 year old needed that many hats, I donated some to the oncology department and Pittsburgh Children's Hospital for the other little girls undergoing chemotherapy who had lost their hair. Since then, I have made over 200 hats and I have been so blessed. Thank God my granddaughter is fine now and her tumor is resolved and I will continue to make hats and pray for the children going through this very difficult time in their lives. Sincerely yours, Carol Collins from Greenville, Pennsylvania. Carol, it is such a blessing to read about your project which started with your family's uh, very, very difficult circumstance and and then you realized that other families were going through the same circumstance, so you began to make hats for other people too. Carol, we have had people from all over the world, not just the United States, to tell us that one of the greatest blessings in their sewing lives had been doing things for people in times of need. And you have certainly done this same thing. So if you have a sewing machine, you're so blessed to have a sewing machine, maybe you ought to look around just a little bit and see somebody who really needs something that you might make just for them. I just thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. I've had a lot of fun. I hope you have too. And I really would like to invite you to join me next time.